Shrouded Fable is our next set coming out in August, but we're already seeing new cards for the next next set, Stellar Crown, in September. Coming out on September 13th to be exact. And today, we're going to look at a new round of reveals for that set, including this Lapras EX. I'm Jeff from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's dig into these new cards, including Lapras EX. It's a basic water type, 220 HP. Power Splash for one water does 40 damage for each energy attached to this Pokemon. Uh, theoretically, you could play this with something like Baxcalibur to get the water energy on here. It could potentially one hit KO anything, but you're going to need a lot of energy here because 40 as a multiplier is not the best. However, it's Larimer Rain attack for one water, a psychic, and a metal, which is a little wonky as these stellar types are. Uh, you get to look at the top 20 cards of your deck and attach any number of energy cards you find there to your Pokemon in any way that you like. So not only could you theoretically get 20 energy on the board, you could power up this Lapras and multiple Laprases to make them one hit KO monsters. Now you're probably not going to get 20 energy when you pull off this attack because you're going to have other Laprases and other trainer cards in there as well. But theoretically, you could have all of your Laprases powered up for the entire game to take big one hit KOs on multi-prize Pokemon and shut your opponent down that way. Now, the, the attack cost is very wonky as these stellar Pokemon have been like three different colors, but there are some new cards that will make that easier to power up, including the A-Spec Sparkling Crystal, which lets you reduce your Terra Pokemon's attack cost by one. And then Crispin lets you accelerate energy from the deck to your Terra Pokemon, accelerate one energy, plus also get a second energy from your deck and put it into your hand. So uh, this is a, these are great ways of reducing that cost or at least making it easier to power up in one turn. Now, is the strategy of getting Lapras all set up for the entire game worth it? I do have my concerns, right? Larimer Rain is going to essentially skip a turn for you, at least skip an attack, and you're really going to have to make it up on the back end. So I'm not sure this is going to be enough, but maybe it is. I think there will be some games where that's going to be enough. And I've also seen some people theorize Dialga V-Star as a potential pairing with Lapras EX. Metal Blast does 40 damage, plus 40 more for each metal energy attached to this Pokemon. And then it's Star Chronos V-Star attack for four of metal and a colorless does two, 220 damage, and you get to take another turn. So that initial turn that you missed with the Lair Moraine attack, you can get back with Star Chrono. So I really like this particular idea. But for, yeah, 20 energy on the board is absolutely hilarious. And I'm not sure if it's good, but I'm sure that people will have a great time trying to make this card broken. We also have a Hydrapple EX. This is our first time seeing Hydrapple as a card. It is a stage two Pokemon with a whopping 330 HP, putting it up there with some of the heaviest hitters in the game, like a Charizard EX. And it has the ability Ripe Charge. Once during your turn, you may attach one basic grass energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. And if you do, heal 30 damage from that Pokemon. Hydrapple EX is already a very tanky Pokemon with 330 HP, and being able to heal off damage along the way with this ability is very nice. And you could have multiple Hydrapples in play, attach multiple energy, and heal multiple increments of 30. So this could become very difficult to KO. And it's attack Syrup Storm for two colorless energy, does 30 damage, plus 30 more damage for each grass energy attached to your Pokemon. So if we pair this with something like a Teal Mask Ogre Pond, which accelerates grass energy to itself while also drawing cards, and then Hydrapple can accelerate energy to itself, and then we could play something like Gardenia's Vigor to draw two cards and accelerate upwards of two more grass energy, this Syrup Storm attack can do potentially massive numbers it's going to it's probably going to do um okay potentially good damage if you have a really hot start your second turn could be absolutely nuts but i feel like in the mid to late game hydrapple ex is going to be an absolute monster so i i, I like it i think that this has potential and for in particular for grass type decks where we just haven't had a really good grass deck in a long time I am all for Hydrapple potentially filling that spot. 
And we also have to look at some new Applin and Diplin cards. Now, Applin's Spray Fluid Attack is, it's okay, one energy for 20, at least on this type of basic Pokemon, but 40 HP is terrible. <laughs> so, um, I mean, all the Applins have bad HP, so it kind of is what it is. The only other standard legal one right now is Dragon type, so having a Grass one is going to help here because the the Hydrapple ability, you could technically now attach energy to this Applin. And then we also have a new Diplin where for, it's got 90 HP. It has the coating attack for one, one grass energy, does 20 damage, and during your opponent's next turn, prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from basic Pokemon. This could potentially help you survive a turn when you otherwise would have been knocked out trying to build up to that Hydrapple. This could help you also just wall off against basic decks like a Raging Bolt Ogre Pond or a Ancient Box and you just kind of win the game by spamming this attack. So I really like this Diplin. We have a new Dreadnought as well and it's a stage one Pokemon, 140 HP. Its attack is not that great. Three colorless energy does 80 damage. And if your opponent's active Pokemon's already damaged, you do another 80 damage. So 160 for three, eh. But its ability, Impregnable Shell, is kind of nuts. If an attack your opponent's Pokemon would, would deal 200 damage or more to this Pokemon, prevent that damage. And now water type Pokemon have their own specific wall. I think in particular lightning type Pokemon where they're hitting this for weakness could kind of just shred through water decks. And now you've got something that they just can't hit through at all. They're going to have to gust around it, get creative, uh, maybe have to start playing canceling cologne. I don't know if it's necessarily worth playing a ton of these. Like maybe this is a one of in your water deck. But it does give you some interesting defensive options as a water deck to keep yourself in the game a little longer. So Lazzle is a new fire type Pokemon. Its second attack is not good, but its first attack, Sudden Burn, your opponent discards a card from their hand. And if this Pokemon evolved from Salandit during this turn, they discard two more cards. So potentially three cards out of their hand and you could play this with unfair stamp where after a ko you get to both players shuffle their hands into their deck you draw five they draw two and then Salandit could then just mill them down to zero cards and you could also pair this with Zorosic Scheme, which is coming out in Shrouded Fable, where you your opponent is forced to discard their hand down to three, and then you Salazzle them with that sudden burn attack down to zero cards. Now, I don't think this is a deck in and of itself. I'm not even sure if this is good enough as a concept to make into a serious deck, but it is something interesting to potentially play with and be really annoying to your opponents by milling all their cards out. We also have a new Archaladon, and this is the first time we have seen an Archaladon card. Duraludon we last saw in the Sword and Shield era as its own Pokemon, Duraludon VMAX, one of my all-time favorites. And now Duraludon, kind of just the basic Pokemon because Archaladon is the new evolution. And it's got the ability Steel Bridge, where your opponent or your Pokemon with any metal energy attached to them have no retreat cost. I This could be kind of cool, I guess, having no retreat on your Matangs and your Dialga V-Stars and all that. Maybe as a one of tech, this could be okay. It's Iron Blaster attack, two metal and a colorless for 160, can't attack during the next turn. I guess you could circumvent that now that your metal Pokemon with energy can, can now retreat for free. But I don't think, as an attacker, I don't think this is good enough and as an ability it seems okay having that free retreat can be nice but i'm not sure there are enough practical applications for it a couple more cards here this glass trumpet card is kind of nuts you can only play this if you got a terra pokemon in play but if you do you get to choose up to two of your benched colorless pokemon and attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of them i think this is great energy acceleration for the terrapagos EX deck and it's yeah you're going to accelerate the Terrapagos or any of its colorless Pokemon that are going to be on the bench um, I guess theoretically you could have like an Arceus on the bench in a Terrapagos deck and that would still work and you could accelerate to that I'm not sure you'd actually want to do that but you could um, Terrapagos looking incredibly strong that unified beatdown attack doing 30 damage for each of your bench Pokemon you combine that with the the area zero stadium that gives you up to 8 Pokemon um, and 
plus this glass trumpet card, this archetype is looking stronger by the day. And one more card here, Briar, where you can only play this card if your opponent has exactly two prize cards remaining. Um, until the end of this turn, if your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out by damage from one of your Terra Pokemon's attacks, you take one more prize. I think this is an absolutely crazy card, potentially taking three cards or three prize cards on a KO. Like imagine you give this the Charizard EX, who at this point, if they've got two prize cards remaining, you are now swinging for 300 damage, potentially knocking out any sort of basic and stage one EXs, knocking out every V-Star with a 300 damage attack, and you get to take three prizes on top of that. Um, this seems absolutely crazy. I've seen some people say that, hey, this is, do, is this a, a busted card? Do we have to ban this? Others saying like, eh, this is just going to be like Sky Seal Stone where people hardly play this. Um, you can play around this as well is another factor. They have to have exactly two prize cards remaining and they could play around this by trying to get you on odd numbers so that you get down to three or one, at which point this card becomes absolutely useless so uh it does give you some or give the game some interesting uh dynamics to consider here i don't know if every deck is going to run i don't think every deck is going to run briar uh definitely if you don't have a terra pokemon you're not going to run this if you do run this or do have a uh, terra deck maybe you're running at least one potentially one of these to try and take advantage of the stipulation i don't know the the power does seem pretty interesting and potentially powerful as well if your opponent's not playing around it and there we go that is it for the latest round of stellar crown cards again the set is coming out on september 13th and based on what we've seen so far i think the set looks absolutely insane there are so many good cards that are coming game changing cards as well the introduction of stellar pokemon look awesome I mean, the Lapras one looks kind of silly, but Terrapagos looks like a real deal attacker. But yeah, what say you? Are you excited for this new round of cards? Let me know in the comments below. But for now, I got to get going. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at In Third Person. You can find me on Twitch at In Third Person, where I stream the Pokemon trading card game every Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And check out the website, InThirdPerson.com, for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. So until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.